All right, hey everybody, welcome to episode 13 of the Stop and Give Me 20 podcast, 20 minutes with some of the world's top fitness professionals. I'm your host, Anthony Renna. You can check out the show notes at stop20podcast.com. That's stop20podcast.com. Make sure you go to iTunes and subscribe to the show. Leave us a rating and a review. Getting a lot of great feedback about the show, but uh, really need those ratings and reviews to kind of boost it up, let, let some other people out there know about it. All right, for today's episode, I have on Martin Nedu Iguagu, and Martin is a former University of Texas football player, who's actually a track star in Texas as well in high school. He is a certified strength and conditioning specialist and a Nike master trainer. He lives in Austin, Texas, and he trains his clients at Stow Training Systems, and he's also doing a lot of stuff online. My exposure to him was through Nike at an event in Portland, and I can tell you that he brings an incredible amount of passion and enthusiasm to everything he does. Nedu, thanks for coming on today. Thanks, man. I appreciate you, man. Thank you. All right. I just got to, I mean, come on. How was that pronunciation? Was that pretty good? Or... <laughs> it was, it was, it was good. It was better than most people. So I, I appreciate that. Was there one teacher ever that got that right? <laughs> uh no especially in texas you know they hear yeah. some type of nigerian name and they just start massacring it so exactly. that was pretty good <laughs> all right well uh let's get into this uh what's your story how, how what was that spark for your fitness lifestyle yeah great question um you know i think for me it started uh i had a um uh, a stepfather who was uh in the u.s military and uh he played for their national soccer team so uh for him every was you know this militant life you know you wake up early in the morning you work out you drink eggs raw eggs milk and repeat <laughs> and then you watch film and do the same thing again so um you know growing up with him in the house man he would always push me to uh to work out and watch film and uh i think he just saw something in me that you know i didn't see myself and uh i started lifting weights and i fell in love with the iron that's how, you know, that's, that's kind of how my story goes. Nice. And then, uh, you know, from there, you know, uh, playing football at UT, he, uh, he pushed me to play football cause he thought that I could actually make the team. And surprisingly enough, I made the team. So I walked on in 2007 and man, uh, ever since then, you know, I just saw how my life was transformed by being disciplined, you know, in the gym and working out consistently. And so, um, I accredit a lot of where I'm at to uh, him just giving me that initial nudge. <laughs> nice. How old were you when you really started training? Oh, man. How old? I was probably like in, let's say, maybe 10th grade in high school. Nice. So uh, I forget how old I was. But, you know, uh, you know, while your friends are partying, you know, I had a stepfather that was there to tell me, like, you got to be doing this if you want to achieve this in life. And I'm like, this dude is smoking something. Like, he doesn't know me. <laughs> But it, it, it panned out. It panned out, man. And uh, I thank him for uh, just continuing to push me to, uh, you know, pursue my dreams. You know, I wanted, everyone in Texas wants to play for UT. Nice. Like everybody, right? <laughs> so uh, when I mentioned that dream to him, he's like, if you want to go somewhere in life, you must sacrifice. What are you sacrificing, Chinedu? <laughs> and it just brings in my head time, time again, man. So. Nice. So... <laughs> You were um, just to kind of stay on that theme. You were you were running track, and so you didn't. You walked on at Texas because you were so fast, probably right. And you- yeah, that I mean that's what helped out. You know, I ran track and um, I played soccer. And uh, funny thing is, I didn't learn football until I got to high school. So everything was soccer and track and basketball. You know, and I just you know I had that African speed. I guess you could call it. <laughs> I was fast. Didn't know where I was going, but I was fast. <laughs> and so I had to, like, you know, watch a lot of film, Monday night football, Sunday night football, Thursday football, and just uh, really learn the game of football in high school. And my speed made up for a lot of things I didn't naturally have, you know, like catching the ball, right? They call you butterfingers. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But, yeah, yeah, I walked on, man, and, um, you know, went through the process, the tryout process, and – uh, made the team when you know had a chance to play and uh, you know live the dream that so many other people you know aspire to, to play at Texas. That's great. 
Awesome. Well, who was your superhero? Was it your dad? Was he, like growing up? Was he at the mm. time? Did you really think? Oh yeah, you know, he, because he was he was really kind of breaking him for the most part. He was giving you a hard time. Yeah. And was but who was that superhero? Who influenced you? Uh, another good question. Um, I think for me, um, I'd actually say so. My my father was not you know present growing up, so my stepfather kind of took his place. But uh, I'd say hero. I'd give it to my mom. You know, my mom. She was there. Um, you know, during those times raising four kids. So I have a twin sister, a younger brother, and a younger sister. Uh, my younger brother plays safety at UTSA uh, right now, so he's graduating. But yeah, my mom, you know, she was there uh, during the hard times. You know, a uh, little back history. You know, she had been through uh, physical and verbal abuse, and so there were a lot of things I saw her go through that she overcame. And um, I took on those characteristics. I'm like, if she could, you know, overcome a lot of this and you know start her own business, I'm like, all right, maybe. I can do the same thing. So she set the the tone for uh, what's possible. What's possible. Love it. Love it. Who uh, who who are you looking up to now? And you know who, who's, oh, who's yeah. your superhero now? Yeah. Um, I don't know. This might be cliche. Man, I really love uh, Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis, um, former Baltimore Ravens mm-hmm. linebacker, NFL, and um, I think at the time. You know, sports for me was a way to find myself and find out what I'm capable of doing. And, um, you know, I'd listen to his speeches and listen to, you know, what he would say at press conferences. And all those sound bites became things that I would tell myself over and over and over again. Right. Like, he, you know, he'd always tell you efforts between you and you. And so, you know, during this time of me finding you know, my identity or finding myself as you're lifting weights, I found that I can control how much effort I have in the gym, right? I can control how much effort I give on the field. And that transfers over into like anything I do in life. And that's what I love about, you know, um, just watching him and what he overcame and, um, you know, trying to not create his own legacy, create his own legacy uh, with his father. And uh, I love that. And for me, he kind of put things in perspective, you know, like it's just a game. You know, it's, a, it's, just, it's just a game at the end of the day. But uh, at the end of the day, what legacy are you leaving? And so to hear a grown man, you know, playing a sport I love say that, it kind of made me think about life differently. Right. Like, you know, really, when we look at it, life is a gift. And so everything I'm doing right now needs to be intentional with purpose. And so to hear someone talk like that, I think was uh, it, it's rare, right? It's, it's rare to hear someone talk like that. And for me, that's a hero because, you know, he was focused on building a legacy that transfers over beyond what he does in his career. But it's about leg- leaving a legacy to make your mark last. And uh, I think that just spoke to me. And I felt like I could run into a wall after that. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Nice. I think I think it makes sense, and he he his message resonated with you probably also because of your stepfather and the things that he the mm-hmm. discipline and the hard work that he was kind of uh, instilling in you. So yeah, that's it. Really, absolutely. And uh, you know, and it 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 is something that it seems like that you're trying to convey that message as well. So who mm-hmm. who are you trying to be a superhero to? Who are you trying to help with your message? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, you know, I've been thinking about that. Um, you know, for, for a while now. And, you know, I think for me, um, it's funny, like after you get done playing sports, um, it's like a new chapter in your life. And a lot of times it's easy to wrap your identity in that. And so it's like trying to find purpose in something else, right? Besides going and playing your heart out to win a game. And, um, I think for me, I saw that as I worked out, I became a different person. Um, the things I set to go after, the dreams I wanted to go after, uh, whether it's start a business, um, all the stuff I overcame while working out, right, it built resiliency. And same thing in life, right, the hard things that we go through, it builds res- resiliency. And so even with, you know, my, my mother and everything she went through, um, overcoming, you know, s- spousal abuse and seeing that and still remaining strong in her faith. Like that built resiliency. And so for me, I use training as a way to teach people to become better versions of themselves. 
right, to show them that you are capable of more. And so to be a hero to those people who do not think that they can, but they can, they have everything inside them, right? When we, we take people to workouts, right, it's like, hey, you have everything in you to become who you want to be. I'm just guiding you along the way. And so just like my stepfather drew that out of me, that's my goal with, with training is to draw that out of people. Like I want to see them change the world, but I have to draw that out of them to believe that, hey, maybe they can achieve more. And, um, you know, and, and sometimes it sounds cliche, but, you know, I like to see that it's it is a lifestyle. It is about overcoming so that you can give people the 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 freedom to to do those things they love and uh, become a, a better person. So who who am I going to become a hero to those people that um have, uh, as Malcolm Gladwell calls it, what is it? Be hags, big, hairy, audacious dreams, and to show them that they can go after it and that they're capable of it. And so um, that's what I'm passionate about doing. I'm passionate about using fitness as a way to uh, get people to see themselves in a different light, right? Improve their self esteem, uh, become a stronger, more resilient person, uh, both physically and mentally and spiritually. So it's, it's kind of uh, the path that I've taken for now. So Absolutely. And I think. <laughs> With you, with somebody, uh, the reason why you're successful is it. You know, when you when anybody meets you, they know they, it's it's real. And, you know, you're really yeah. living this, and you've led that led. You're leading it by example too. So, mm -hmm. uh, so great stuff. You know, here's Thank a you. question for you about the industry because you're doing a lot of online training, and yeah, what's interesting though, it, and must be a challenge for you, is to be able to um, convey that message. Um, mm -hmm. you know, this motivation when you're not seeing people right in front of you, talk to us about the online training industry and maybe, um, some of like the, the advantage or why you got into it. And then really some of the challenges that you, you faced, like trying to establish, you know, the same experience. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, um, you know, just like, so the highest form of communication is, is in person, Right. And then, you know, we start going into voice and uh, calling someone and then you might text somebody or, you know, video or something like that. But it's always that in person, right, that that's like the highest form of communication that we could uh, experience with people. And so um, one of the things I think before you even get into online training is you have to get good at the in person first. Right. Like you have to start. Uh, um you have to build in person before you go online. And I think that's a, a big mistake a lot of people do going into online training is they expect to uh, have the time freedom, which is a reason why, you know, a lot of trainers go into it. Um, but they get bogged down because they don't have systems in place. Right. And it ends up taking a lot more time to create programs and workouts um, for somebody than you expected. So it's like it's not accomplishing the goal you set forth in the beginning. So. I think before you even do online training, you have to get good at the in-person and understanding where people's hangups, right? Their hurts and hangups and starting to, to predict these things. And that's with online training. It's like, I'm having to predict where they're going to have hangups, where are potential pitfalls and everything that I've seen in person gives me a clue to what they're going to, you know, deal with. And so making sure things are clear, transparent, um, I think building a culture is another big thing, especially online. Um, you want to make it simple and easy. You don't want to give people too many steps because, you know, it's just another excuse, right? How much more someone that you meet in person and they give you an excuse right when they walk in the door. So you got to make it simple and easy and you got to make sure that it's a message that delivers straight to the punch, straight to the to what they're looking after. And so, you know, building systems in place, uh, I think one of the reasons why I went into online coaching was that. Um, I saw that my time was valuable, right? And I could only train so many people in a day. And eventually, you know, you see a lot of trainers get burnt out. You know, I have tons of trainers that either be friends that either became real estate agents, worked for the fire department, decided to go to physical therapy school. They went a different route because it wasn't cracked. It wasn't all it was cracked up to be. Um, I've been training since 2007. And, uh, I, you know, people ask me, it's like, man, you know, you get a chance to, to work with companies like Nike or, or Live Strong back in the day or e -How. And um, it's like, how, how did it happen? It wasn't overnight success. 
it was building resiliency, right? Being persistent and uh, loving what you do. And so with the online coaching, um, I think it's anticipation, um, building systems as well so that you're able to uh, uh, systemize all of your business, right? And uh, being able to predict what could potentially happen and not happen and answering questions and then also valuing your time. Because, you know, you could open up your email and have email support and have everyone email you 24-7. That's like, no, that's not why I did that in the first place. (laughs) So I think, you know, building systems. um, One guy in the fitness game that um, I really um, learned from, you know, quite a bit and uh, just continue to, uh, you know, ask him questions is uh, John Goodman. John Goodman um, of the Personal Trainer Development Center. Uh, If you haven't interviewed him, you got to get him on the the podcast. but. You know, uh, reading his books, man, just inspired me. And it was like, you know, there is another way it's possible. You know, there's a po- there's a way to leverage my time. You know, um, I think before it was training one person and then Alwyn Cosgrove, you know, training two people at a time or semi private training. And I was like, OK, you know, it's uncomfortable. It's it's something different. But let's go for it. Let's let's be innovators. And, um, you know, later on, I'll talk about like that whole innovation, uh, why it really spoke to me, too. So. Now it's time for the stop and give me five segment, five rapid <laughs> fire questions and answers. So let's do it. Let's start out with the uh, coolest college football experience. Oh man. Oh, the coolest. Oh, the first time I walked out of uh, Joe K Memorial Stadium. So uh, DKR, man, nice. it was just like a scene from Gladiator. You know, guys are nervous, they're shaking. There's over 100,000 people in there. And uh, they're yelling, coaches call us out, Texas, fight, Texas, fight. And we run out. And as I'm running out, I hear, Daddy. I'm like, Mom? And I see my mom in the crowd. Oh, wow. (laughs) Over 100,000 people, and I hear my mom. And that was like one of the coolest moments, you know, just to share that with me. And, you know, growing up as a kid, looking forward to that moment. So Very cool. All right. (laughs) Favorite really bad reality show? Oh, man. Okay, okay. So uh, I'm going to blame my wife on this. So my wife, she's Spanish speaking. She uh, is fluent in Spanish. And uh, she watches this show called uh, Rica Famosa Latina. So it's like, you know, real housewives, but like the uh, Latin version. And it's all in Spanish. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, What's what's one thing that uh, not a lot of people know about you? Oh, man. So... um, before I got into like, you know, uh, training back in 07, I actually wanted to do missionary work. And, um, you know, I've led missionary teams into Nigeria, into uh, Dominican Republic and Mexico. And so um, that was something I actually wanted to do uh, prior to training. And uh, I still do it to, uh, you know, once one trip every two years. But um, yeah, I did some missionary work overseas. So. Very cool. All right, Carl Lewis is 55, yes or no? Can you, <laughs> can you beat him in a race? Yes, if uh, you're listening to the <laughs> <laughs> You guys are going after school in the park. Yeah, lot, let's o'clock. do it. <laughs> there we go. Um, all right, I got to ask you the, the New Yorker question for a Texan. Largest steak you've ever eaten? <laughs> oh, man. Oh. I don't even know if I finished it. Maybe like 16 ounce? Okay, wow. Like, I don't know. I, I don't <laughs> Not a big steak eater. See, I, it's funny because I asked that question because when I was driving through Texas one time in Amarillo, I went to the big Texan steakhouse it's where that if you eat okay, that yeah. 72 ounce steak but uh oh there's no gosh. way i was eating that i probably had the <laughs> so martin we got we got two more questions for you um yeah what's what's getting you excited right now uh, what project that you're working on i think uh for right now uh man it's uh just the online coaching you know um being able to create that platform and to work with people that i don't see um it's it's uh, exciting, you know, be able to uh, meet people overseas and to train them and to change their life through fitness, right? To create this lifestyle, and I think that's what excites me because the ability to reach more people, and that's exciting. It's a it's a task and it takes quite an upfront work, but uh, I love challenges, and that's the reason why I got into this business. So. Good stuff. All right, um, let's finish up uh, last minute with uh, the letter to. Uh Little Nedu, what's that uh, advice you're going to give yourself? <laughs> oh, so it'd probably be in a Nigerian voice, Nedu. You know? <laughs> um, I think to me, 
I think the letter is um, time is a gift. Um, you know, value it. Uh, make sure you're purposeful and you're intentional with your time. Uh, spend time, you know, building relationships rather than, you know, things that can tear up and with moth and, and dust. And, um, yeah, focus on relationships, building relationships and spending time building memories with people as opposed to, um, you know, making more money and stuff like that. So, Nidu, I like just my limited experience a couple times that we uh, we did the events together. Um, it's it's obvious that your you know your enthusiasm and your your passion it's real and this is what you're doing and uh, and and thank you. I really appreciate you coming on. I was looking forward to uh, kind of learning more about you uh, through the show. So thanks so much for coming on. Man, thank you for inviting me, man. And uh, Ant, man, I, I love what you're doing, man. And uh, I love it. Just keep keep igniting the fire, igniting the fire, man. I love it. Thanks a lot. All right, well, that's going to do it for episode 13 of the Stop and Give Me 20 podcast. Thanks again to Nadu for coming on. And make sure you check out all the links to all his stuff at stop20podcast.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the show. Leave us a review and a rating. It'll really help us out. My name's Anthony Renna. Thanks so much for stopping by.